Hi, I'm Nandan Bal, I was the former coach of the Indian Davis Cup team. I'm currently the chairman of the AITA selection committee for Davis Cup and Fed Cup. And I run my own tennis center in Pune at the Ferguson College Tennis Academy. I think the game has become a lot more physical now. You know, earlier on, uh, your talent, your touch, your artistry counted for a lot. But now it's all about hitting hard, running all day long and being very athletic and just very powerful. So that's the main difference between what tennis was about 30, 40 years ago and what it is now. I think even uh, Asians, uh, not just Indians, but even Asians who earlier used to rely more on their touch artistry and uh, you know feel for the ball have realized that if they want to make a breakthrough in international tennis and you know at the men's or ladies level they have to be physically as strong and I think that's a major shift in uh, their outlook to the game they are working a lot harder on their physique they're working a hard, lot harder on just being able to you know just survive a three four hour match and that's I think a major difference in what tennis was earlier and now. Basically, I took up the game because it was, uh, you know, it was in the family. My father was a very good tennis player. My mother was a badminton player. So essentially, playing one of those two sports was a given. Given the fact that this was an outdoor sport, both my parents felt that it would be better for me to be in an in an outdoor sport rather than an indoor sport, and that's how it happened. It's very difficult to really tie it down to one player. So if you look at the 60s or 70s era. I would definitely say that Rod Laver was somebody that I grew up uh, watching, saw a lot of his matches, loved the way he played. So Rod Laver definitely for me would be one of the all-time greats. You know, eight Grand Slams spread over two years, unbelievable. 1962 he won four Grand Slams, 1968 again he won four Slams. And the, the huge uh, plus in that is that in between he didn't play anything. So that was really fantastic. And then of course there was Roger Federer who came much later and uh, you know dominated tennis 20 grand slams even now hopefully we'll have a good last year final year in his tennis so roger federer came along and i think if you look at the current lot of players that are playing i i am actually a very big fan of uh, sitsipas i think sitsipas is a very good all court player he's got uh, he's got the mental strengths and i think uh, i see a lot of uh, a lot of wins for him in the future going ahead in the next two or three years then there's also the new boy who's coming up, 18 years old, Alcaraz from Spain. So these are the four or five guys that I would say, you know, for me hold a very special place in my mind. Uh, probably Wimbledon, just for the show they, they put, put up. You know, uh, it's, uh, it, it's played on grass as we all know and that's a surface which is very difficult to adapt because not uh, too many players play on it all year round. I don't think there's more than a one, one or a one and a half months of grass uh, court tennis right through the year. So to be able to perform well on that surface is special. On top of that, it's all, you know, the pomp and the, the royalty at Wimbledon and the Royal Box, which is, you know, ev everybody just loves Wimbledon. The sense of punctuality, the sense of discipline, the beautiful way they have maintained the All England Club, I think all that put together, Wimbledon would certainly rank as the number one uh, slam for me. Anytime you win a match, you feel good about it. So for me, uh, getting it into the Asian Games Finals in 1982, the semi-final tie against China was very important and I had to win my tie. I was down a double break in the final set and I came back and won that match. Uh, in a long two and a half, three hour match to put India in the finals. That would certainly be a memorable match. Another match I would probably say was reaching the finals of the World University Games way back in 78, because I was the first Indian to ever win a medal at any sport at the World University Games. You know, so all in all, I think these two or three matches would certainly be up there. But I think as far as the infrastructure is concerned, I think we've got some really good infrastructure, you know, the the stadium that we have at Balewadi, it's superb, you know, it's a 
we, we we do the challenges there we do the you know the tata open so that really is a fabulous uh, venue for tennis in pune apart from that you know there's so many clubs now that are doing well in tennis i mean as we sit here in the ferguson college we have seven floor courts clay courts well maintained so all in all i think the as far as the infrastructure is concerned i think uh, we are right up there i mean we have the best infrastructure in in uh, in not just pune or maharashtra but in in india uh, when it comes to am i satisfied with the the way tennis is happening in pune yes i think there's a lot of juniors who are coming up there are a lot of juniors who are trying very hard to be the best they can be and i think uh, that's good for tennis i think if you look at uh, the if you look at the top indians right now almost every junior team whether it's under 14 under 16 boys girls men's we have somebody from pune up there in the team now i think that comes from a a planned move by the association and i must actually here congratulate uh, sundar rayer and the maharashtra state lawn tennis association who i think have done a wonderful job in putting together a a, a plan for development of tennis in having a system through which players are now coming out and i think they need to be congratulated for that but there's always something that needs to that could be done you know i mean there you know i think the at the end of the day the bottom line there are there are two or three things that are important as far as the tennis players are concerned at the end of the day how you play on a certain day would definitely be important so that really is important we you know that's something that we can teach them a lot more i think a lot of it also has to do with mental training so a lot of that has to come from our mental trainers we they need to make sure that our boys are match up that they believe in themselves they have the confidence in themselves and then the next big thing apart from that the coaches i think are doing a good job with the tactical and the technical play and uh, i think to a certain extent so are the physical trainers they're doing a fairly good job with the internet and more access to information i think everyone is doing a good job so finally at the end of the day now it's up to the association and the government put together to find the necessary money the capital to actually not just to put into infrastructure but also the talented kids to take them to a much higher level and that's uh, to a large extent right now it's being done privately through parents or through well wishers but that is something that the government and the uh, the association can put their heads together and see if they can come up with a plan to actually take these kids through to a next level through corporate help or government help